Are you ready for the Word of God? Amen. Amen. I'm just going to open up with a couple of verses here that we've been using for the last couple of weeks. Um, it doesn't have to go on the screen, Christine. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 is one of the verses that we've been using as our main text, the theme of this, this whole series that we've been talking about, the kingdom of God. Now, it says... Your kingdom come. Remember, the disciples just asked Jesus, how should we pray? And then he tells them, pray like this. And he goes, pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Then verse 10, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I believe that the Lord wants his will to be done in the earth today. Now we talked about what it meant you know, the word kingdom meant, there's two words in that one word, king and dom. King spoke of a ruler or a monarch. Dom speaks about where we get our word dominion from. So it means that there's a ruler, a king, who has dominion over a people or uh, a place, okay? So God is the king, he's the ruler of his kingdom, and he has a will. Now, wherever a king rules, he sets forth his what? His will in that land and for that people, okay? So it's the same way in the kingdom of God. You and I are part of that kingdom, and there we, we are to follow and obey the will of our king, of our God. Now, the other verse is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 where it says, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So there we find out that he wants us to put the kingdom first. And as we put the kingdom first in our lives, as it becomes priority in our lives, then he promises also that he will take care of us. He says, put my kingdom first, and all these things will be added unto you. What's he talking about? Well, back up and read all those verses. He talks about you not worrying about what you shall eat, what you shall wear, where you shall live, all these things. Because what? He'll take care of it. Seek him and he'll provide for you. Okay? Now that doesn't mean you don't go and do anything. It just doesn't mean that, okay, I'll put him first and do what he wants me to do and I'll just sit back and do nothing and a house will magically appear and, you know, paychecks are just going to be coming in the mailbox. No, you still got to work. You still got to do things. But the Lord blesses that work. Amen. And he will make sure that you never lack. Okay? So, last week, I wanted you, we were talking about kingdom purpose. And there were four ways um, that I wanted to, us to look at this kingdom purpose. Because we all have a part of the kingdom of God. If you are in the kingdom of God, you have a part in the kingdom of God. You have a role to play. But also, as I said, there is a will of the king, and we must carry out that will. So there were four areas that I want us to look at and how we carry out that purpose or the will of our God. And that was one, in the gospel, two, ministry, three, in our home or our family life, and four, in our workplace or our careers, okay? Now, last week, what did we do? We talked about the gospel. Jesus said that this gospel shall be preached and then the end will come. Amen. So it is his will that this gospel be preached in all the world. And it has gone into every country in this world today. It may not have reached every people group, but it has reached every single country today. Now that tells us something that Jesus Christ is soon to return. When this gospel of the kingdom goes into all the world, then the end should come. I wasn't going to talk about this, but this is just coming to mind right now. You look at the con current condition of our world today. And I will tell you that people are in a slumber today. People are sleeping today. People are not alert. They're not praying today like they should be praying. You go through Scripture and what do you see? You see the parable of the vir ten virgins. Five are prepared, five are not. You see through the Scriptures, you see Paul saying that we must pray, that we must watch, that we must be ready. Why? Because there are so many who are sleeping. 
Jesus says that in the last days it will be like the days of Noah. They'll be eating, drinking, marrying, and all this stuff just going on with life as usual. So many people are not aware of the days that they are living in. I mean, we preach Matthew 24, we preach Revelation 6, and all these signs, the seals, and all this kind of stuff, and we see all the things that are going to happen before Christ returns. We preach about it, we hear it, but now we're witnessing it, and many of us are still sleeping. We're not awake, we're not watching, we're not ready. We're not looking at this day. We don't have that urgency. Like, i got to fulfill what God wants me to do. I have a kingdom purpose. Time is running out, and I need to be, be, be mobilized. I need to be working towards what He wants me to accomplish. Because one day that trumpet will sound. I'll be taken out of here, and it'll all be done. So, if you're thinking about, you know, I'd like to witness this person, I'd like this person to come to church. I'd like this person to know Jesus Christ. I would like this to happen, that to happen. Better get busy. Better get busy. Time is running out. This is the wrong time to be complacent. This is the wrong time to be passive. This is the wrong time to be sleeping. Look at everything that's going around. We need to be praying, people. We need to be rising up. I mean, when I, when I put it out there, hey, we're starting prayer meetings. We're limited to 10 people, though, at our head office. You need to sign up. I mean, you guys should have been fighting for those positions, for those spots. But you know what? I haven't had a problem with overflowing that service yet, that prayer meeting. I'm not scolding you, <laughs> okay? In case you think, okay? I always have a serious look on my face, so don't think <laughs> I'm scolding you, all right? I'm not. Um, but it's true. Think about it. Th that kind of tells us our spiritual condition, doesn't it? I mean, we like to think that we're on fire for the Lord. We like to think that everything is good. Everything's great. Hey, if something happens, I'm going to be with Jesus. But don't forget your kingdom purpose. You see, I'm a, I'm a pre-trib guy. I believe in a pre-trib rapture. Now, us who are pre-trib, we get accused of wanting to be escapists. Okay? Oh, you guys just want to get out of here. All you're doing is sitting around waiting for the trumpet to sound. No. One thing pre-trib does is it tells me that the return of Christ for his church is imminent meaning that it can happen at any moment, a moment that I don't know. It can happen in five minutes from now. It can happen an hour from now. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen next month. It could happen in 10 years. I don't know. See, the thing is, I don't know when it's happening. But he tells me that it's going to be happening. And he tells me that there are signs. And I'm seeing those signs today. So what does it tell me? It doesn't tell me just sit at home and just wait for the trumpet to sound. No, it tells me I need to be busy about my kingdom purpose because time is running out and we can go to be with Christ at any moment. So what does it do? It motivates me. It motivates me to do what God has called me to do. There has to be a sense of urgency today. I mean, we need to be seeking, seeking the Lord. We need to be praying like never before. There's so much to be praying for today. We need to be praying for our governments. We need to be praying for our leaders in that. Because they're trying to bring in socialism into our countries. The very thing we used to go to war for and trying to protect people from is the very thing we're trying to bring into to our nations today. Okay, I'm going way off now. <laughs> I may not get through this today either. <laughs> okay. A word of warning for people who are planning on going into universities and colleges. A word of warning. The universities and colleges today are nothing but indoctrinational 
institutions. Something they've been doing for the past 30 some odd years is programming the mind of people in this nation. You know, going from democracy, capitalism, whatever you want to talk about, going into a form of socialism. And slowly, slowly they've been reprogramming people's thinking to accept a socialistic system, type of government. Many of our young people today who, who have gone into these colleges and universities, they come out believing socialism. They develop atheistic ideologies and thinking. They can go in as Christians and come out as unbelievers because their professors and that have been teaching them that there is no God. And then they've been teaching them socialistic society. Uh, reasoning, philosophy. You know the problem in the United States today? You know what's going on? Between Republicans and Democrats, the difference between Trump and those who are against him? Whether you like Trump or not, I'm not that's not what I'm here to debate. Is one side is bringing in socialism. He's standing for capitalism. How many of you like the thought and the idea that if you put yourself, if you educate yourself and you apply yourself, that you can prosper in the nation? That you can become prosperous and earn, you know, a lot of money and do whatever and do good for yourself? You can start your own businesses and your own companies. You can prosper. How many of you like that idea? You know, and then under that, of course, there will be different classifications and stuff. There will be the, you know, the higher income, the rich, there'll be the middle class, and then there'll be lower classes in that, okay? But what happens is, see, with socialism, they want to put everybody on the same level. They want you all having the same income. Here in Canada, we have, we have some socialistic things in place. We, our health care is a socialistic way of system. It comes from, we all pay taxes so that everybody can have health care. Those who don't work, I'm paying for their health care. That's a socialistic system. Welfare. I pay for that with taxes. We all pay taxes. That all goes to that system, that people can go on welfare. That's a socialistic ideology. Now, if you listen in the news, what do they want to do? They also want us all to have the same income, one level of income. If you've been listening, they've been talking about that, even here in Canada. Okay? Now, what's going on in the U.S., all of these things that are going on, is these, this other, the ones who are against Trump are trying to bring in a socialistic system into the United States. And that's what this war really is about, okay? No matter what you hear and all the garbage and everything that goes on, on the news and everything, they're, they're obviously trying to make him look really bad, okay? But what it is, is it's one form of government coming against another type of government, okay? There's a war there. Now... I've listened to, there have been some, some people, some Russians, who experienced what it was like when that came into Russia. Communism, socialism, all this, this ideology. And these older men, they're saying what they are witnessing and what they are seeing in the United States today is the very same thing that took place in Russia. This is how it all begins. Okay, there's violence, there's riots, there's racial tensions, all these things get risen up, different ideologies, and they begin fighting against each other. What he said was interesting, was that the next step, because what they try to do first is they try to remove all forms of authority. What do you hear today? Defund, defund the police. Right? Defund the police. Now, I don't agree with everything that police have been doing, and I know there's, there's bad cops out there who do bad things, and there are people who are racist, and we don't stand for that at all, against that. But we also know that there are good police officers as well, those who do good. I mean, if somebody's coming in and breaking into your home and they're armed, who do you want to show up? You're going to want the help of the police, aren't you? You're going to want them to show up. Because if you defend yourself and kill somebody, guess what? You're going to prison. That's the way the law of Canada works. You used excessive force, so you're going to prison. Even when you're trying to defend your own family. 
So who do you want to show up? Who do you want to help you? You want the police to help you. Somebody does wrong against you, steals, robs you, and that. Who do you want? You're going to want authority in place. You're going to want the police in place. You're going to want the law in place. You know, Jesus said something. He said that in the last days, what? There will be lawlessness. Lawlessness. Another sign, people. When you're hearing about all this, get rid of law, get rid of all this stuff, get rid of <laughs> authority and all this. It's another sign that we're in the last days. Now, the next step is, first you remove all authority. The next stage is, you get rid of the church and the pastors of the church. You get rid of the moral authority in the country. Wherever there's communism, wherever there's um, socialism, that there's no freedom of religion. They remove the freedom of religion. And that's where they're headed over there. That's why there's this war. And don't think that this won't happen in Canada, that we're free from this. We already have adopted some of that system in Canada. But what am I saying here? Why am I saying this? Because I'm telling you, you need to watch, you need to be ready, you need to be alert, you need to be praying, and you need to be living out your kingdom purpose. Kingdom purpose. We have a kingdom purpose to get the gospel into all the world, we know that. Number two, our kingdom purpose is our ministries. Our ministries. We each have ministries. We all are given gifts. Ministry isn't just left for the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. We're not here to do it all. We're here to equip you to also take part in the work of the kingdom of God here on this earth. We can't do it alone. We need the whole body of Christ mobilized today. We need people who have giftings to, to go and share, to go and share. We need people with gifts of help and mercy and hospitality to go out there and help people, feed the poor and do all these different things. We need people in the body of Christ who have giftings to encourage one another, to pick up one another. There's so many different giftings, giftings of leadership, giftings of ministrations, giftings of giving, mercy, helps. Then there's prophetic giftings, the speaking giftings, tongues, interpretation of tongues, all of these things. We need all of these things working together to accomplish our kingdom purpose. And the first thing you need to do is see how you fit into that. You need to first understand that you have a place in the kingdom of God and in the work that he's doing here on this earth. Some of you have, have stepped into that and you're doing your work. I mean, we have people doing all different types of work here today. As I said, we have our media team. We had our worship team coming up here using their gifts I'm up here using my gift to speak to you. We had people going around putting signs and helping, just helping out with all these COVID restrictions and everything. We have people working in here making sure all this is, this is all being done. We have hand sanitizer. We have signs going up get, talking about distancing and all this kind of stuff. Everybody's wearing masks today. Why? Because there was someone who, who made sure that everybody's wearing masks. We have ushers working here today. We have lots that is going on. Why? Because people are using their gifts. They're stepping out. And they're working according to their kingdom purpose. Now, if I tried to do all that on my own today, that would be impossible. I, can't, I wouldn't be able to do everything that's going on here today. You see, we all have to see that we all have a role. The roles are different, but we all have a role. You look at Romans chapter 12, and there he talks about minist body ministry, how every one of us has a function that is given to us by the Holy Spirit. 
There is grace that is given to us. Now, grace is favor, but it also means an enablement. He enables you to function in your gift. So the Holy Spirit gives a gift, but he also gives you the grace to function in that gift. Amen. You see, a lot of times we hear, or we may feel that, hey, we're called to something. We're called to do something, but then we sit back, ah, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if that's me, I'm just not comfortable. But, then there's, but there's that sense in you that, hey, that's what I'm called to. You know, a lot of times we say, oh, we're too shy, or just, you know, I don't know if I want to do that. It's because you're looking at it wrong. If he's called you, if he's put that burden in your heart, then he's also anointed you for it. He's given you the grace to step into it. Amen. He's given you the grace to step into that ministry. And you need to trust that. And that's when it comes to relying on the Holy Spirit to do the work that you do. I mean, you guys know that I, I was a shy guy before. I didn't like speaking in front of people. I hated that. I used to skip school classes because there were book reports or something I had to do, speak in front of the class. And there was like, no way I'm doing that. I'm out of here. Right? I'd skip it, take a nap, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not speaking in front of the class type thing. But, you know, it was the same thing in ministry. All of a sudden there was a day that came where I felt that tug in my heart that God was calling me into ministry and that I was going to have to begin speaking. What did I have to do? I had to ignore all my feelings. I had to ignore all of that. And just say, Lord God, I offer myself to you. I make myself available. I put my trust in you. You're going to have to work through me. Your spirit is going to have to anoint me for this purpose. And it stepped out into it. You know, you guys, you guys have heard all this. One was a play where I played the major role. I played the part of Jesus in that play. Before I came to Christ, I did a couple of plays in school and things like this. I did one in actually in Sunday school as well, and I froze up in front of everybody. Now I was jumping into a bigger play where I was going to play the major role. It was going to be on three nights. It's being advertised all through Winnipeg. And now I'm going to have to be the lead part. And it was not easy. But the night that I went out, before I went out there, I just I was alone in the dressing room. Everybody was out there already. The play is starting. It's getting ready for my part. And I'm just, Lord God, you're going, to have to, you're going to have to do this. I can do all things through Christ. I just started <laughs> declaring that verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I put my trust in you, Lord God. And everything went great for those three nights. First time I ever preached the Word of God. Pastor William invited me to speak at the resort, the retreat that we had out in Saskatoon, way back then. <laughs> I didn't go to Bible school yet. I didn't have a library yet. So I had no tools. I had no, no commentaries. I had no Greek and Hebrew study things and all this stuff. I didn't know how to prepare a sermon. I never even taught before. And what? That was the first place that I spoke. While I'm sitting there at my desk in my room, Jesus, you're going to have to teach me. <laughs> you're going to have to show me. <laughs> and I've told you before, I go back and I look at that message and I look at that outline and everything that I made today, and I look back and you would think I would have taken a, a homiletics class, <laughs> the way it was structured. It's the same way that I structure even today. today. Well, how was that made possible? By the Holy Spirit. It's by the grace of God. Whatever He calls you to, whichever he's, he's placing you in the body of Christ, He also enables you. He gives you the grace to function in that gift. But the thing is, you've got to learn to trust it. You need to learn to trust Him. Because if you don't step out into what God's calling you, into your kingdom purpose, there's somebody who's missing out. There's somebody who's missing out on that blessing. There's somebody who needs you. 
We talked about the two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God, and how there's this war between the two kingdoms. Right? We talked about that. Now, there are Christians who are growing weary in the fight. They're growing weary. Some are, be- are beat up, beat down. They're getting discouraged in that. And they need somebody with a gift of encouragement to come alongside and encourage them and pick them up. Not everybody's got that gift. Not everybody has that. But there's someone in here who does. And those people need you. So if you don't step into it, then what? People are missing out. You're missing out on your, king, your kingdom purpose to encourage and pick those people up. Now you can look at any gift. Any gift, talent, and ability that God has given you, if you're not using it for His glory, if you're not using it for His kingdom, there's somebody who's missing out as a result of it. We need all the gifts functioning. Think about the sons and the daughters in the church today. I'm talking about younger people. I mean, you can start right from my age all the way down. We need our elders, all of us. Yeah, I'm, I'm lead pastor, I'm 47 years old. Well, I'm going to be in two weeks. <laughs> um, I still need my elders. I still need my elders who have more experience than I have. I need to still check in with them and talk to them about things. I need their guidance still sometimes. I haven't arrived. I'm not perfect. The Apostle Paul said, hey, you know, I'm pursuing after Christ. I'm running this race, but I have not arrived yet. Even the Apostle Paul. None of us has. We're all growing and we'll be constantly growing and moving. But we always need our elders. There's so many sons and daughters today in the church who are going astray because they had no godly influence in their lives. Because maybe at home there's problems. Maybe at home their parents don't spend any time with them. But they're needing some godly influence and some godly instruction. That's what our elders are for. Those who have been Christians for many years, those who are mature. The young people need that guidance. They need that influence. They, know, they need to know how to deal with the issues in life, the problems in life. How do we bring Christ into these situations? How do I live for Jesus in the midst of a, of a, of a, of a world that is so against Christ? A world that is full of sin. How do I live that? The elders can instruct. The elders can guide. But then also, you young people, you need to see your need for it. You need to see your need for the instruction of the elders. But also, to the elders, there's so many who are not stepping into their calling. They're not living out their kingdom purpose. They don't see that they have a role to play with the younger people in encouraging them and guiding them, not pointing fingers at them, not criticizing them, but encouraging them, instructing them, building them up, helping them build up faith, and live for Christ. We have a role for that. That is missing in the church today. I'm not just talking about Crossfire. I'm talking about all the churches. You can go anywhere and you'll see there are some who are stepping up and doing it, but, then, but there are others who are not. They're sitting back and they're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm older now. I'm 60. I'm 70. Whatever. I don't know what I'm supposed to do anymore. I don't know what God wants me to do. Look for somebody to disciple. Look for some young people who need guidance in the church and begin guiding them. Attend the men's meetings. Attend the women's meetings. And have an influence in that place. Because since we're starting those up again here, our women's and our men's meetings are not just for, when you think of women, it's for the older people. No, if you're 18 and older, you can join those, that women's meeting. You can join that men's meeting. And now what do we have? We have a mixture of people, different ages, different experiences, more experience, different levels in their walk with Christ, 
Correct? And each one is building off of the other. Now you have those elders who are investing in those younger people. And those younger people are growing as a result of it. We need that in the church today. We need that. There is so much that is against us today. There's so much that is against the young people today that they need the help from those who have been there and gone through it already. We all have kingdom purpose. It doesn't matter your age, what age you're at. If you're older, if you're younger, you have kingdom purpose. We all have kingdom purpose. Now for some of the things that I, that I taught, if you want to go and look at these things, Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 13. You can look at Titus chapter 2 and verses 1 to 10. And you can go study those things out. There you will see how there is body ministry that is to be done. All of us has a role. You look at that body, you know, at our human body. There's different functions, different roles. Some of those you don't even see. They're internal, right? Our heart, our lungs, our liver, and all those things. You can't see those things, but yet they're so important. You remove the heart, the body doesn't live. The liver, same thing, but you don't see those things, but yet they're so important. What do we see? We see the externals. We see the face and all those things, and those things are important too. And it's the same way in ministry. There's some things, okay, like my own position. You see it. It's out there. It's like the face, okay? But that isn't the only important role in the body, is there? There's other things that are behind the scenes that nobody sees that are so important. Do I have permission, Kayser, to talk about? <laughs> I always use Kayser as an example. Do I have permission <laughs> for what she does in this church? You don't see her role. Okay, you see it if she's in the praise and worship because that's one part of what she does. But you don't see her role behind the scenes. I was just talking about this in the school of ministry. And I said that this church wouldn't even exist today if it wasn't for what she does. But nobody sees that. Nobody knows about that. It's hidden. It's like the heart inside the body. <laughs> It's bringing light to the rest of it. Honestly, we probably, if we didn't have Kayser doing what she does, we wouldn't be here today. Honestly. But we don't see that. See what I'm saying? We all have roles. There's some that's external. We see it all. The praise and worship, the preacher. You know, you see the ones in the media and everything working around here today. The video camera, externals. But there's things that are taking place today that you don't even see. Christine's another one who's part of that. She's the bookkeeper in the church. Some of you probably didn't even know that. You don't see that. That's behind the scenes. Right? But so important. Now, what has God called you to? What has he placed inside of you what is he calling you to do? There's something that he's given you. There's a gift that he's given you. And the body of Christ needs it. Amen. Don't look at what you feel. Don't even, you know, you always have thoughts of yourself that you're not good enough. I'm not good at this. I'm not good. Ignore all of that. And allow yourself to be an instrument, a vessel to be used by God. Remember my favorite verse, Galatians 2.20. I've been crucified with Christ. Right? It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives through me. So if I've been crucified and if I'm dead, why am I listening to my emotions? Why am I listening to all that garbage in my head? <laughs> right? Let Christ live through you. You're a vessel. You're an instrument. And you will do things that you never thought you would do. 
you'll make an impact for the kingdom like you never thought you would. Amen. That's why Jesus said, pick up your cross daily. Amen. Allow the life of Christ to flow through you. You have kingdom purpose. Every single one of you have kingdom purpose. He's gifted you in some way that he hasn't gifted somebody else. And the body of Christ needs you. We have two ministries. We have a ministry to the world, which is the gospel. But then we have a ministry within the church. That of encouragement, edification, training, and so on and so on. So I leave you with that question. This is your assignment for the week. What has God called you to? What is your purpose in his kingdom? Now, for the rest of the week, I want you praying and asking, Lord, Lord, what is it that you have gifted me for? What is it that you want me to do, Lord? And when you find that out, you're going to be left with a decision. Will I follow it? Or will I turn away from it? And I can't help you there. That's, that's your decision. But when you say, yes, Lord, I yield myself to that, the grace will be there. The grace is going to be there to do it. Amen.